Okay. Right. So um, what I want to do with you is this activity. Do you remember I said to you I want you to be ready for this activity? Or have you forgotten? Oh, yeah, you wanted me to get like glue and... Yeah. And did you manage yeah, to do uh, that or not? Yeah, I have in my pencil case. I'll get it now. Awesome. Okay. And scissors and whatever. Did you print out the little icons that you needed? And now he goes, what? Otherwise, don't stress. We can also just talk talk it through um, using my um, screen if you want to. That's another way of doing it. Okay, yeah, I think that'd be easier. Okay, that's fine. We can do that. Um, okay. I'm going to share my screen. I just need to pop my, open the book on my phone so that I can also see what we're doing. Let's go here, share screen. Here we go. Okay, in, um, in your book that you've got, it's we're looking at 9.2. Um, and do you remember I've shown you the accounting equation is you're going to have what you've got is your assets on the one side, that was your vehicle. And then on the other side, you've got who, where did that money actually come from or who actually owns it? Um, and that's your equity and your liabilities. Do you remember all of that? Yeah. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that we are a, um, a, a business that wants to make and sell some Burvos rolls, okay? Um, so I just, I'm quickly looking for the actual book itself so that I can read you the whole scenario perfectly and that I don't get it confused because otherwise knowing me, I'm going to lie to you and then you'll be totally confused. Oh, yeah. I'm yes. sorry, but I got, an, I got a new phone and all of my messages that I'd previously have gone. A shame. So can you Yes, I can resend it to you. Um, Thank you. Let me do that now quickly. Um, oh, well, there we go. Okay, and remember that the um, the solutions and, and everything is also in the classroom. Um, I think you did join yeah. the classroom last time, so that's fine. Yeah, I did. Okay. Thank you. So I've just sent you the document if you want to open it on your phone so that you can also see. Um, and it's the discovery activity 4.2 is where we are. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's on page 39, just in case you want to follow on at the same time, because it's quite useful for us yeah, to be able. Will. Yeah. The phone is the book these days. Eh? Mm -hmm. Life is so interesting. Okay. So I want you to imagine that you want to start a business with a few friends. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to make and sell some Burvels rolls. Um, and what you're going to do, ha ha, is cut out all the pretty pictures on the next pages, which you're not actually going to do. Um, but if you just scroll down, you can just see what those icons would be. Can you see there's a whole lot of money notes? Each one represents 50 Rand. Um, yeah. And then there's a couple of other bits and pieces all sitting over there. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Yeah. So you would cut them all out and attach some press stick, et cetera, except we don't actually need to do that. Okay, so, and then we're going to play with them on the template that I've got on the screen in front of me. And basically we're gonna move everything around. So if you were working um, physically, you would just be taking those little pieces of paper with press stick and moving them about as you need to. So that hopefully we can have a nice illustration of what we're actually trying to do. Okay, yeah. right. The transactions that we're doing are on page 43 is where I'm jumping to now, okay. Okay. Right. So fortunately, you've all decided to save your tuck shop money to invest in this new venture. And together, you've got 50 rand to start. You place this money in an old Tupperware dish marked your Burry stand. Show this in your table and check that it balances. How would you illustrate it in the accounting equation, do you think? Um, so what would it represent? Mm. The, wouldn't the 50 rand represent an asset? Absolutely. There and it is. then the Tupperware dish, stand. Okay, well, the money's in the Tupperware dish. That's kind yeah. of like your bank account that you would have. So isn't it like almost a petty cash? Yes, yeah. So it's like a petty cash box, but that's this money that we're showing over here in our assets. Okay. Yeah. But why do we have this money? Where did it come from? Uh, you saved money from the tuck shop. Yeah, okay. And from the business's perspective, because remember, we keep the owners and the business transactions separate. From So from the owner's perspective, it was their tuck shop money, but now they've put it into the business instead. So what does that represent? Um, isn't it capital? Exactly. 
So we've got our partner's investment in the business, 50 bucks. Do you see? Yeah. And that is exactly that. That's your capital. Okay. Right. Then, oh my gosh, my phone's going to keep going to sleep and it needs my face ID and blah, blah. Okay. Uh, number two, you realize that there's not a lot you can buy with 50 Rand these days and you convince your mom to invest in your brilliant business idea. She agrees to lend you 100 Rand on condition that you pay her back with interest of five Rand at the end of the month. Show this in your table and check that it balances. How will you do that? So, um, the 100 Rand that she gives you is a liability, right? Yes. Okay. And then if you're paying it back on interest, have you had to pay interest yet or are you going to no in the it's only at the end of the month exactly in the future. so at the end of the month we'll take that into account for now we don't actually stress about it you just okay. worry about that hundred rand but remember it's got to go into two places so that it balances where are we going to put it you would well you, you could say that it's an equity because your mom is giving it to you and she's sort of a partner is she a partner or is she lending no, you and you're going to have to pay her back with interest? She's lending you. Uh-huh. So she's not so an owner of the business. So what is she? Yeah. Uh, isn't she, uh, isn't she like a, I think it's a debitor or creditor. <laughs> you're thinking of a creditor, kind of. A creditor is usually a supplier, somebody who sells stuff to you on credit. Your mom mm -hmm. is actually somebody who you owe money to in the long term. Okay. So yeah. can you remember what that's called? It is like a creditor. So how would you classify creditors here? Is it asset equity or liability? It's a liability. Yes. Okay. So your mom is also going to be a liability, but instead of being a current liability like creditors, she's going to be a non-current liability. Like oh, a loan. Okay. Do you remember loans? Yeah. Okay. And so that's going to be one side of the equation. And what's the other side? Um... I mean, I, it isn't an asset. Is it an asset? Is what an asset? No. The money that your mom gave mm. you. It's in the Tupperware, isn't it? Yeah. So there's the money in the Tupperware. There's your loan from your mom. See? Yeah. Okay. Then the next one. Um, it's time to go shopping. You spend 120 Rand on... Um, a tasty burivos from your local butcher, 20 rand on fresh rolls from the bakery, and 10 rand on paper serviettes to serve the burivos rolls to your customers. Show this in your table and check that it balances. How do you think you'll put that? So, wouldn't the burivos be an asset? Because if you're selling it, you're making money off it. Yes, it would. Okay. So, the first thing is are we going to take money out of the Tupperware? Yeah, we are. Yes. So we're going to have to take some money out of the Tupperware. Okay. And what are we going to buy? The Burivos is going to be an asset. There you go. What else are we going to get? Then fresh rolls. And where would you pop those? Uh, assets as well. Mm -hmm. And what else? And paper serviettes on New York. Paper serviettes to serve. Mm. Do you see? Now, although, yeah. yes, these are going to get eaten up in the future right now, they are actually assets of the business because I am going to be able to sell them and I'm going to make some money from it. So right yeah. now they are assets. We actually call them inventory or stock, trading stock. Oh, okay. Okay, because it's the things that we're buying and selling. Are you happy with that idea? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Now we're going to make the Burivos rolls. So this is where it would get fun. If you had actual Burivos rolls, um, I would want you to, obviously you've cut them all out. I would want you to fold the roll around the Burivos and then fold the napkin around the roll and staple it together to make your nice ready-made Burivos roll. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously you don't actually have to do that. Okay. But we're going to say that this is what it's going to look like. Okay. So, oh, and then we're going to sell it, by the way. Now, unfortunately, I don't, don't have a picture of the made nicely Borovos roll. But the next hmm. point says we're going to sell our Borovos rolls. Um, and so we head off to the hungry neighbors and we sell them all for 15 Rand each. 
Luckily, there's an important rugby match on. It's nearly lunchtime. You sell all 20 rolls to your, um, that you and your friends have made, and you need to show this in your table using your prepared Burevos roll to represent the rolls you sold. You will have to allocate a value to it and check that the table balances. Now, the first thing is, do you see that you're suddenly going to get all the money coming in? Yeah. Okay. So we previously, we had nah, 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 our Burevos rolls, which are now made into Burevos, um, that you can actually sell. What happens is suddenly we've got our money. Okay. Yeah. But if you look at this now, we've got 300 Rand on one side and 150 Rand on the other side, which doesn't make sense, does it? Yeah. Okay. How do you think you can make this work? Do you have any ideas of what you might want to do um, to show that 300 Rand, for example? Where else do you think that 300 Rand needs to go? Well, you, you could put it into sort of making like an actual stand where people can go to and then, you know, buy a Borovos roll from. Okay, you could. But what I'm saying is not, not physically. I'm talking about from an accounting perspective. How are we oh. going to record this? Because right now our equation does not balance. We've taken mm -hmm. the stock out. Or you could pay a And we've put cash in. Yeah, no, but that would be a different transaction. Yeah. So um, can you see that we're missing two other pieces? Because remember, for every single transaction that happens, there's two things involved. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've taken the stock out, but where does it go? And we've put the money in, but where did it come from? So we've got 150 Rand stock out, and we've got 300 Rand cash in. So our assets are fine, but something doesn't add up for the rest of it. Any ideas? Mm, no. I'm trying to... Not that I can think of right now, no. Okay. Um, can you see what is the difference in the table at the moment between the two sides? Mm, the assets are a lot more than the mm. expenses. Mm. Now, who is actually going to get that money at the end of the day? Who does it belong to? The business. And then, we'll mm. and which of these categories here represents the business? Doesn't it, isn't it equity? Mm -hmm. So can you see that we need to do something to equity? Yeah. Because in reality, what's happened is we've earned an extra 150 Rand. We're not quite sure how at this point, but magically, we magicked an extra 150 Rand into the business by making and selling yeah. Burevos rolls. Do you see? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to show that those Burevos rolls over here um, came out of stock and we're turning it into our cost of equity, uh, cost of sales and the sales together. Okay. Yeah. So basically what happened is we ended up with a profit of 150 Rand sitting there in equity, do you see? Yeah. And then we've got 300 Rand on both sides and we are happy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yeah. So what happened was you sold the Burevos rolls um, and when you sold them, they became an expense. Okay. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. Now, also what happened is your totals increased on both sides because suddenly you've got more cash and your equity had increased. But we had to figure out that the equity had increased because yeah. we earned sales income. Now, if you look at number four, number six together, your cost, your expense of those roles, in other words, the value that it was when it was stock, it is no longer stock because the roles are gone. But we had to factor that in to making our profit. We couldn't just say, oh, we've made 300 Rand sales and add that to equity because it was actually too big. We had to factor in the cost. So that Burevos yeah. roll of 150 Rand profit is a combination of the sales 300 Rand and the cost of 150. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So. Over here, you can see your total cost was your actual burevos, your rolls, and your oh, serviettes. Napkins. Yes. And you can work out, if you wanted to, you could go and work out, so what was your actual cost per roll just by dividing by the 20 rolls that you made? And then you can see that was the actual cost that you had. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay. So if you sold it at 15 Rand, that means that you actually ended up with 7 Rand 50 profit per roll. In other words, 150 Rand profit in total. Yeah. Do you see? So although we just kind of figured it out for ourselves before, 
the numbers actually do all support what we were doing. Yeah. Okay. So what happens is that when you sell stuff, when you decide to buy stock and sell stock, you need to take the cost of sales into account. You can't say, okay, well, I'm just going to, um, you know, treat it like my service is rendered. Because remember, up until now, you've just had current income, which was very easy. You did something for somebody, you earned the money, and that was that. But the problem is now you can't really do that because you're buying stuff. So you've got the asset stock, but when you sell it, you actually have to lose that stock because you don't have the asset anymore. And you have to create the expense to offset against the income of sales. Yeah. It's a complex idea, but hopefully you can handle it. Okay. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're just going to practice lots. Okay. Okay. So the important thing to remember is your selling price isn't all profit. And if you think about it logically, you can understand that. If you bought your Borovos rolls and they cost you seven Rand fifty each and you sold them for 15 Rand, your profit was not 15 Rand per roll, was it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've got to consider your costs. Now, what will happen is when you factor your cost of sales in, the cost of sales is the cost of making those Borovos rolls, okay? But it's only the cost of making the ones that you sold. You subtract that from your sales and that gives you something called the gross profit. Okay, so that's a new idea. This word gross actually just means big. So it's the profit oh, okay. relating to um, how you're actually going to do this um, relating to the business before all your other operating expenses, etc. Okay. Okay. Right. You've got to remember that you've got to take that trading stock asset and you turn it into cost of sales because what happens is before the sale, you had a trading stock asset. After the sale, you suddenly have got an expense that you need to create and you no longer have the asset. So all you do is you just take the asset and you turn it into an expense. Yeah. Okay. So that is the important part that you need to remember. Now, this is where it gets a little bit interesting. We need to do some calculations to show a markup. Very often what, will, what businesses will do is they'll say, okay, we are going to add part of whatever my costs were to that cost to get a selling price. So instead of just saying, um, I'm going to thumb suck an amount. They might say, for example, I'm going to add 50% or 100% of that cost onto it again to work out the selling price. Have you ever heard of that concept or that idea? I heard of it last year, I think, when they mentioned it. But... Okay. So, so you've vaguely heard of it. We're going to actually do it in practice now. Um, okay. And. So, it, yeah, it's not the only way that you determine prices. You can also determine prices by saying, well, what is the supply and demand for my product? And which, uh, what price is going to actually give me the biggest profits um, if there's a certain demand, et cetera. So there's all sorts of different ways that you're going to set your price. And probably it's going to be a combination of all of these. So, for example, when I set prices for my books, I look at my cost and I say, okay, I want to add on however much markup approximately, therefore what price should I sell it at? But then I also look at what price are my competitors buying, uh, selling these at and is mine competitive or not? Um, I look at the value to the customers, are customers prepared to pay for it? What is the demand? Um, I also look at funny things like, is it a nice round number? Because I don't want to have uh, sell a book for 352 rand and 48 cents. I mean, that's just ridiculous. So yeah. I'll usually add it, round it up or down to wherever I think it needs to go to. So that is about three or four different considerations that I've had in working out my, my selling price. Okay, so I want you to keep in mind, it's not always cut and dried like this. However, in accounting, we very often do do this calculation or um, use this. Generally, what would happen is you do all those other considerations and then you'd end up working out what is a markup that does cover all my other expenses and everything else that I need um, and then just use that to add on. Um, it's just the easiest way of doing it in reality. Okay. So you want to add a percentage onto your cost so that you can cover all your other expenses and hopefully make a little bit of profit, otherwise you're wasting your time. And in that way, you can determine what the selling price is actually going to be. Usually what we'll do is, if you're going to say the cost price plus a percentage of the cost price, can you see that you would be saying the cost price times the markup 
is going to be what you add on. But obviously you want to add the cost as well. And therefore we put 100% in there also, because if you say 100% plus the markup percentage, that will give you the percentage that you need for the selling price. Okay. okay. Now what I want to do here is I actually want to pause and I want to show you a very clever little trick um, on the whiteboard. We're going to draw pictures. Okay. Okay. Now this tool that I'm going to show you now is something that you can actually use for all sorts of calculations in lots of different situations. Basically, any time that you need to, that you're looking at different numbers um, that have a relationship to each other and you need to work out a missing figure, then this is how you can do it. When we're talking percentages, usually what will happen is there will be three numbers involved, okay? And because there's three, I like to draw a triangle. You don't have to draw a triangle, but it's quite useful to draw a triangle just to help you remember, and my triangle's a bit skewed, but anyway, just to help you remember that there are three points and we need to remember all three points. Okay, that's the only reason there's a triangle. There's not a set side for any particular thing. Then what we do is we say, okay, if for example, the markup is going to be 50%. So if they say to you that this business oh, um, is making the Burevors rolls and we want to add 50% of the cost. Um, or in fact, for the Burevors rolls, we, how much did we add to the cost? Can you remember? What was the cost price? What was the selling price? Um, Have you lost it? Of like, yeah. Okay, like don't stress. The cost price of just general, like just of in a, general. Of any particular just... item. So oh, a cost price is how much you buy it for and then exactly. selling price is how much you sell it. Okay. Exactly. I, I thought there was a specific thing I missed and I got no. scared. No, <laughs> not at all. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say the difference between the cost price and the selling price is very often expressed as a percentage of the cost price and we call it the markup. Okay, so they will often tell you that the markup is, for example, maybe 50%. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now it's 50% of what? They're always going to say to you it's 50% on cost. In other words, it's 50% of the cost price or half of what it cost is what we're going to add on to determine the selling price. Okay. Yeah. Now, whatever that percentage is a percentage of is what we're going to use here as the 100%. And in this case, that would be the cost price. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, if you have a look at this and your cost price is 100% and you're going to add a markup of 50% to get your selling price, what percentage do you think your selling price is going to be? Uh, wouldn't you try and make it profits like 150 or? It is going to be 150% because all you're doing is you're adding these two together. This one over yeah. here is actually your profit. Let me just make a note here. Um, this one is going to be your profit, um, but specifically it's going to be your gross profit. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So now that you've used a triangle to set up these figures, you can see there'll be a relationship between all of these numbers. And if, for example, I give you the selling price, you could work out the markup on cost. Or if I give you the markup, you could work out the cost price or whatever. You can go from cost price to selling price, selling price to cost price. You can go between any of these numbers, okay? And the way that you do it is, can you see that if, for example, I'm looking at a relationship maybe between the cost price and the selling price, that is the most common one. Um, because what will happen is in your exercises when you're recording is very often they will give you the selling price and tell you what the markup was and they want you to calculate the cost price, okay? So this is often the relationship. Can you see that if you take the relationship like that and you say, okay, we're looking for the cost price 100% over 150%, okay, now just imagine that there's a line underlining that 100%. Um, you can't see, let's quickly actually just draw one. Nah, there you go. Okay. okay. So if you say 100% over 150%, can you see that that is the same relationship or ratio as your cost price over your selling price? Can you see that? Yeah. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, I gave you a selling price and I said to you, the selling price is, let's say, let's put another equals here. Okay. Um, let's say I give you the selling price of 3000 Okay. Can you work out, and there we go, skew again. Can you work out what the cost price is if the selling price was 3000 um, mathematically. You like your maths, don't you? Yeah. Hmm. My brain is a bit fuzzy from today, though. Um, <laughs> so, bottom is selling, like, wouldn't you just take 10% of it? Why 10%? No, I no, I'm trying to... <laughs> Shame, you're getting confused. It's not, I'm not confused. It's just, I don't like, I, yeah. so the bottom is your selling price. Wouldn't it just take a hundred percent, like, wouldn't it just be a hundred percent over three? Okay, no, that's stupid. You're getting there. You uh, are getting there. Keep going. So your selling price is a hundred and fifty percent of your cost price like it's a hundred over 150 uh, yes so can you yeah. just take two thirds can you just take two thirds of three thousand and then exactly exactly okay so what happens is when you're doing this you can actually create a formula that says whatever the rand amount of what i'm looking for is is going to equal my amount that was given in this case, 3000 times what I'm looking for, which is 100 over what I was given, which was 150. Do you see that? Oh. Okay. Um, let me actually just pop in here. So it's the same as saying whatever the given amount was, let's put a space there, times whatever you're looking for as a percentage divided by whatever you were given as a percentage yeah. do you see yeah isn't that nice and easy mm -hmm. okay it now that's so simple it is so simple uh, isn't it i don't know why we're struggling are you doing it in class at the moment no in class we're just going over what we did last year okay cool so where are you struggling with it you're not struggling. It's not, that I, it's not that I was struggling. I looked mm. at it and it was there in front of me and mm. I just didn't, I just didn't click That's in okay. my head. That's okay. Okay, now, um, if you look at it like this, this is the important formula and you can use this formula for any calculation where there's a relationship between numbers like this. Okay. Set up your numbers so that you can see what they actually are. I like to use a triangle, but as I say, you don't always have to, but it's, it's quite useful just to, to get into the habit of how to set it up. And once you've done that, um, then you just use this formula over here. What you're looking for, it's your amount times what you're looking for over what you've got. Do you see? Okay. Yeah. So that is the formula. Now, let's go back to you. Do you want to take any screenshots or anything, or do you want me to screenshot and send it to you? Uh, I'll take a photo quickly. Thank you. Okay. Right. Now that is something that is actually going to be really useful. Um, and so you'll see now, if you look at this formula, can you see where we got it from? Okay. Because it was our cost price is the amount that we are. So if, if we're working, for example, to go the other way to say from the 2000 to the 3000, how do we get the selling price? You take your cost price and you times it by you're looking for the selling price and the selling price would be your base hundred plus your markup. Do you see? And then yeah. actually it would be over a hundred. It's just, we don't bother to show it here. So this is a formula that they'll probably teach you in class. Um, I've just shown you how we actually get there um, because you don't need to. I mean, you can just go and memorize formulae, but what I've shown you can be applied in so many different ways and it helps when you have to work in other directions that you're not used to. Okay. And then, as I said to you, you might go and adjust it slightly to get a suitable price. So you don't end up with 83 cents or something. 
So <laughs> this is what we were looking for now. If we said we're looking for our cost price and it equals the selling price, it's actually times 100 is on the top, but it's invisible on this formula, divided by the 100 plus the markup, which is your selling price. Do you see? Yeah. Okay. But the formula that I gave you is actually easier to understand what you're doing. Because if you just remember, it's the percentage that you're looking for over the percentage that you were given. That's all you've got to do. Okay. Okay. Right. So let's have a look at an example over here as an effect on the accounting equation. Okay. Um, when we bought the stock, do you remember that what happened was we took all of those notes out of the assets because we no longer had the money, but we added in the burivals and the rolls and the everything else. Okay, so that's what happens when you buy stock. Nice and simple and straightforward, and I'm pleased that you identified immediately the trading stock is going to be an asset. Okay, then when you sell the stock, there's actually two parts that you've got to take into account here, because there's the selling price, and that's the easy one to do, and then you also have to take into account the cost price. So I want you just to start remembering for yourself that if you've sold something, there's two parts. There's going to be two lines for this equation. Okay. The selling price is simple. And sometimes what is actually quite useful is over here in the margin to write SPCP for selling price, cost price. You could even go and work out the numbers if you wanted to and put them in over here. Okay. But for the selling price, it was for our Borovos rolls was 300 Rand. Um, then it's quite easy. You pop in plus 300 for bank in assets. That's when we suddenly had all those six sets of notes. And in equity, you're going to say plus because of the sales income. Now, we just showed the, gro the gross profit in when we did it. But I'm sure you can imagine that the total sales would have been that 300 Rand because that is the amount that you received. But because that 300 Rand is not your actual profit, that's why you have to now take the stock out and turn it into an expense, do you see? So you are removing it from the assets, you took out the Borovos rolls and the napkins and everything, they left stock, I mean, they left the assets column because they weren't there and our trading stock decreases. You came home with an empty box, you don't have the Borovos rolls anymore, they are gone. But at the same time, by taking that out of assets, you are now creating the cost of sales expense, which offsets income. So these two over here together, are your gross profit of 150 that you worked out. Do you see? Yeah. Okay. You can show these two together as plus 150 gross profit. Um, but in reality, it's sometimes easier to just do them separately because you just remember each amount has two accounts. So you first do the selling price, then you do the cost price. Okay. So what happens now in our accounting equation, if we're busy looking at all the different bits and pieces, um, remember that in your assets, we've got the non-current and the current. Um, remember non-current means that we're probably going to keep it for longer than a year. Current asset means we're hopefully going to turn it into cash within the next year, okay? Yeah. And now we have stock, okay? I haven't yet introduced your debtors who are your customers who buy on credit, but they would get added in here also if you had to sell it on credit. That's the next step that we'll look at just now. Okay, not today, but back next week or the week after. Okay, but are you happy yeah. with us here that stock fits into current assets? Yeah. Okay. In equity, we've obviously, we know that equity is made up of your capital and drawings with net profit feeding into it. And net profit is made up of your income minus your expenses. Now, previously, you just had your current income as your income and you had a whole bunch of random expenses. Now, what happens if we are suddenly creating sales income and we are also creating a cost of sales expense. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So what I want you to then try and do for yourself is try and start looking through um, 4.3, um, which will just help you to see, are you on track? Does it all make sense or not, etc. Okay. Can you see 4.3 in your notes? Uh, yeah, let me get uh, my phone turned off. Oh, shame. Is it a nice new phone at least? Yeah, I got a really nice one. It's just that oh, I need God. to change the setting because if I don't use it every 10 seconds, it turns off. Yeah. But it does save battery. Which one did you get? 
the new Samsung S21. Oh, nice. But it's not going to talk oh. to your Mac, you know. Oh, no, but I have an iPad, and whatever was on my phone, I used my iPad, and now it's on my Mac. So um, now, you see, when I change phones, I don't have to worry because everything updates. Um, okay, so can you see 4.3? It's on page 46. Uh, yeah, I can. Cool. That is the one that I want you to try and do for me. Okay. Okay. And once you've done it, submit it in Classroom for me so that I can see it. And just remember, yeah, when you submit in Classroom please add a private comment, even if it's just a full stop, because then I'll get an email knowing I need to go and check your work. Okay. okay. I will. So, I, so I just do this in an exam pad and then send it to you when I'm finished. Is that okay? um, you can actually, you can either print out this page and do it on paper and then take a photo and attach it to classroom. That might be the easiest way of doing it. Alternatively, right. what you can do is you can actually open this in Acrobat Reader and then use full and sign to actually write in the document. Oh, okay. I'll give that a try. Or any annotation, whatever. I really don't mind how you do it. Whatever is easiest for you. If you want to just do it on a piece of paper, that's absolutely fine too. Um, but to me, it would be easier to actually work in the, the template that is over here, um, whether it's on paper or electronic, I don't mind. The only thing is I don't want you to spend hours trying to set up your tech. If you need me to help you with tech at some stage, I always can. Um, but do whatever you are comfortable with. Okay. Okay. Great. Have a fabulous week. I know you've got to still find out what's happening with cricket and times and things like that. Uh, we will sort that out and discuss and negotiate as necessary along the oh, way. So cricket on Tuesdays is from three to five and then Thursdays is three to five as well. Okay, so you've got cricket on Tuesdays and Thursdays and are you, you, you don't have matches yet, but you might have them at some stage. Oh, no, we don't have matches until term two. We just have inter-house, but that's on Saturdays, so that's fine. Okay. So, in other words, we need to move your lesson to a Monday or a Wednesday or a Friday? Yeah. Okay. I'll obviously have to negotiate with Jade, and I'll have to look at my own timetable and see what works, because I'm quite full, but I will see what I can do to shuffle for you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank Pleasure. You. Have a wonderful week. Okay. You too. Okay. Bye. Bye.